let's start to think through scattering situations. Scattering effectively means that we have free particles traveling and that there's then a change in potential. Now, there's a few different ways this can go. One is that the potential drops, another is that the potential raises, another is that the potential raises higher than the energy of the particle. So let's start with the scenario where the particle is, uh, sorry, the potential is dropping. And in this case, we're not thinking about bound states, right? This is just the finite well. We know how to calculate those bound states already. That was chapter five, now we're in chapter six. So what we're thinking about is an, a particle that's coming in, for instance, here, that we have some energy. And remember that the quantization of our energy was actually coming from our, our well itself, the boundary conditions of the well. So there's actually a continuous spectrum of energies, or really momenta, of incoming particles, or there can be. There's not going to be a quantization condition here. So we have some energy that these particles are at. So now we have to kind of think through what's going on. So one thing, again, if we think about um, having these different states, we're often going to write them as plane waves, as E, and we've done this so many times, I should know it by now, I, K, X. Now if, right, we can kind of say in general that K is going to be 2M, and then E minus V, and I'm going to put X to mean kind of wherever you are over H bar squared. So here's, here's the thing to note, that as we move through here, our V is changing, so our K is changing. So in this region, we're going to have K1, which is where V is equal to zero, so you have 2ME over h bar squared. So keep in mind that this one here isn't meaning like our first energy state because there's not going to be a constraint, it's just in this region. And in fact, in this region, V is the same, so this is also going to be K1. Now in this region here, we're going to have K2, and so we have 2M, but now notice this would be E minus V, and E is actually, uh, sorry, V is negative, so this is now E plus V naught meaning the energy over the ground is bigger than it was before over at h bar squared. Am I still on the screen? Oh, not quite. So what we need to do now is really think about what's going to happen. And this is where it's helpful to think about this kind of more as plane waves, right? These aren't standing waves. Think about this more as plane waves. We are talking about them in terms of energy and not necessarily mo momentum, eigenstates per se, but fundamentally think about them as plane waves. So I'm going to just draw kind of my boundaries here. The idea being that I have coming in to this region some wave. Let me switch colors. And we would say that this wave coming in is going to be A, so our normalization condition, E, I to the K1x. And it is, we're going to say, okay, traveling, traveling to the right, we're thinking about that. Cool. Now, again, I'm not including time variation, but we would have that time variation term as well coming from whatever the energy is, and the energy is tied to this. But now it gets to this boundary, right? So it gets to this boundary, and at this boundary, something can be reflected, and something can be transmitted. And there's actually an analogy in optics and electromagnet, uh, electromagnetism. So you've possibly studied that, you possibly haven't. But one thing to think about, like the glass that I'm writing on right now, you know, there's light above me, it reflects off my face. That light then from my face, some of it comes through the glass, passes through the glass to the camera. But I also see my reflection right now, because some of that light that gets to my, the glass reflects. And so any time you have kind of a boundary, you can have some reflection and some transmission when it's a wave phenomena. And this is, this is again common. You've possibly studied it in intro physics or in electromagnetism. If not, you can see it other places as well. So what that means is that some of this is going to be reflected. 
Now, the amplitude is going to be different, and we have to switch the sign to kind of correspond to the fact that it's kind of going in the other way now. But it's still K1 because it's still in this region. But now we have an amount that's transmitted. Cool. Now again, we give that a different coefficient. So you might initially say, hey, A equals C plus B. Oh, we're going to come back to that, not necessarily. So now we're in this region, so this has to be K2. OK, so, so B, this wave just keeps going that way. We don't have to worry about it. But now the C wave continues, and it again gets to a boundary. OK, so some of it reflects. And we now have D, E to the I. And now, again, it's going the opposite direction, so we're going to introduce a minus sign. It's still in this region, so it's K2, and it's going backwards. Now, we have some continuing on. And we don't use capital E because that would be weird since E is also energy. So we're going to say F E to the I, because it's going to the right, K1X. OK, so, so notice what we've done here. We now have a wave traveling to the right and the left in this first region, right and the left in the second region, and then just to the right in this third region. So why is there not one coming backwards? Well, so if we started with our particle our particle plane waves coming in from this region, why would anything be coming in from this region? Like, there's not, we're, we're not positing that there's anything to scatter them further to the right. You can set that up. That's a harder problem. Let's not start with that. So we only have one wave traveling to the right. So this is kind of like what makes it through. So when we talk about transmission, we're talking about what fraction of the wave makes it here. And one way to think about that is if this was here, if there was no well here, there would be no reflection, so all of it would be transmitted. Now, you might ask the question, well, wait, wait, wait. We didn't talk any more about this D wave. When this D wave gets to this boundary, some of it's transmitted and some of it's reflected. You're right. And then that reflected wave gets to this boundary, and some of it's transmitted and some of it's reflected. And this sounds like a very, very challenging problem. So don't worry about that. We're not starting by positing what fraction is reflected or transmitted. If we were, then we would have to think about the fact that you actually have waves that are getting bounced back and forth many, many times. We're going to stop here, and we're going to use boundary conditions. And this is why I said that it's not as simple as A equals C plus B, because we're really just going to say there's some amount of rightward traveling wave here and some amount of leftward traveling wave here. And if that's the case, then we don't actually worry what fraction of that rightward traveling wave is actually the reflection of this leftward traveling wave and so on. So, so again, I kind of laid it out initially and in that like, oh, some's transmitted, some reflected. But really, at the end of the day, we're saying, hey, rightward traveling wave here that came directly from this A versus which was reflected from D, that looks the same, right? So now we use boundary conditions. This is part of why I've been harping on boundary conditions so much, is that now when I say, let's use boundary conditions, you need to know what that means. So the boundary conditions here is that when we think about the overall wave function, right, there's going to be one overall wave function we draw. At this point, Basically, what your phi on the left is needs to equal your phi on the right. On this point, your, sorry, I said phi, but you know, your psi on the left needs to equal your psi on the right. Your first derivative on the left needs to equal your first derivative on the right on both sides. So again, this is, this is the S idea of boundary conditions, that now, so it isn't just saying, OK, it's equal to 0 or whatever. We're using this idea. Now notice that we've already talked a little bit about the difficulty of normalizing plane waves. And so we're not worrying about what's happening at infinity. It's a plane wave. It keeps going. So we get to start setting up some things of what's happening here. And so since we're saying that the wave on the left has to equal the wave on the right, if I just start with this one, Right? So what I'm going to say is, you know, at x equals negative a. And notice that, you know, where you position this, we could call this 0, we could call this l. 
again, it's going to change a little bit the, the way you do the math, but it shouldn't change your answer in a quantitative way. So at here, we're going to say that psi of the left equals psi on the right. Well, so what do we have on the left? We have a e to the i k1x plus b e to the negative i k1x. And now notice, if these coefficients were the same, you could be like, oh yeah, sine and cosine, I know this. Well, they're not necessarily the same. So that makes it, I mean, it still can be converted into cosine and sine, but we can't just say this is equal purely to cosine or purely to sine. We don't have that. But that equals what's happening on the right, which is now c e to the i k2x plus d e to the i k2x, and I missed my minus sign here. And then obviously what we can do is take that x and convert that into an, a negative a. Right? So that becomes negative a, negative a, negative a, negative a. And now remember that we've said that e is not actually going to be quantized. So e is just a parameter. What is the energy of this plane wave? And v is a parameter of the problem. So we now have one equation with four unknowns. That means you're going to need to set up some other equations. And the downside is that we actually are going to have a lot of unknowns at the end of this. So that's where we get to really talking about transmission and reflection probabilities. That is actually one way in which we kind of say, OK, I'm going to ignore my overall normalization. So I hope that that has helped explain kind of the figure in the book and the way that the book is presenting um, scattering. I remember when I was a student and studied this, I especially got tripped up on kind of thinking about infinite reflections here. That isn't what you need to think about. There's just some amount of rightward traveling wave, some amount of leftward traveling wave. Put that in your boundary conditions. So next we'll think through some of the other conditions um, that can occur with plane waves in terms of changing potential.